Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Toby here, and recently I released my episode of The Evolutionary Tree about space Pokemon, extraterrestrial Pokemon, Pokemon that have come from the stars. The next episode, which typically would come out today, is coming out first thing next week. That is going to be about artificial Pokemon, man-made Pokemon. And in the last episode, the one about space, I included Magnazone and Metagross. These two electric steel and electric psychic Pokemon are very mechanical in nature, but I put them in the extraterrestrial episode and I got a lot of comments about this. Toby, these Pokemon are clearly robots. Magnemite is a robot that appears in power plants. Metagross, it is a supercomputer. These Pokemon are man-made robots and should be in the artificial Pokemon episode coming out next. And I'm here to tell you that no, no they're not with a little Pokemon theory. When you're in a 6v6 Pokemon battle, you're not taking robots into war. But you could have a 6v6 battle of war robots, today's sponsor. Hey, we're doing a sponsored video. Haven't done one of those in a while. Sponsored videos, of course, helping me keep on doing what I'm doing on the channel, making more videos, more Pokemon theories, and of course, a big shout out and thank you to today's sponsors, War Robots. It ties in with the theme of the video so well. War Robots, the 6v6 mech fighting game available on the iOS and Google Play stores. I downloaded it this morning, jumped online, 100 million other players have already installed the game, so that's kind of cool. There's like lots of people there to play with. You start out with a robot, but then there's lots of upgrade options. There's a ton of different like other robots that you can get, or different guns, different weapons. And it's not intimidating to start. When I jumped on this morning, the two games that I played, I won both of them, beating other players who were in better robots than me, because there's a lot of strategy involved in the game as well. You either try and eliminate the enemy team or take control of all the beacons with your team and, and both times I won by eliminating the enemy team. And that's just because it's so tempting to blow up other robots. Of course, uh, next time I'm probably going to try some more strategy in this real-time strategy game. Actually coordinate with my other teammates and of course you can make groups and clans of your own. It's constantly getting new updates. In July they added some new weapons, they added some skins for all the robots. And if you sign up now, there's a sort of starter pack. If you download and install it today, you get a boa robot with a unique skin, 100 gold, uh, 400 thousand silver. The robot is naturally durable with a ton of HP and you get loads of extra weapons as well. Maybe I'll see you in there. I've left a link at the top of the description and it, of course it helps out the channel and thank you so much to War Robots for sponsoring this video. I'm actually pretty picky when it comes to sponsors, only choosing sponsors who I feel are a good fit for the channel and certainly War Robots good theme and topic for this video. Because the Magnemite line and Beldon line, they must be robots, right? Look at the Magnemite with the little screws in it. These things are so clearly man-made. That's what you've been telling me in the comments of the video about the space Pokemon. And I'm gonna tell you why they won't be appearing in the artificial Pokemon episode and why they definitely have come from space. First of all, there's no doubt in my mind that these Pokemon are definitely related some way. They're both steel type. The first evolution has one eye. The second evolution is the result of multiple of the first evolution coming together. The Matang is made up of two Beldons, supposedly, and Magneton, of course, three Magnemites. Both Matang and Magnezone look like UFOs, which of course is a point I'll be bringing up a little bit later on. And of course, all these Pokemon levitate in the air with their Pokedex entries talking about how it's all related to magnetism. Beldon can be made to feel better if you give it magnets and Magnemite it levitates using electromagnetic shockwaves. So, with that in mind, these Pokemon very similar, closely related on the evolutionary tree, no doubt. But as to whether they came from space or whether they're man-made, that is the question. Now, the arguments for man-made is they look mechanical. They look like robots. But the thing is, robots exist in the Pokemon world. We've all heard of Clembot, this from the Kalos series, and this certainly is no Pokemon. And when you think of other artificial Pokemon, like Porygon, Type Null, or Mewtwo, or any of the others I'll be talking about in that artificial episode. But the thing is, with all these Pokemon, their Pokedex entries declare it quite loudly and proudly. As Clement would say, the future is here, thanks to science. These Pokemon want you to know that they're artificial, but the Magnemite line and Beldum line, they don't have that. The Metagross line, granted, talks about how it's as intelligent or even more intelligent than a supercomputer, but again, listen to the wording in the Pokedex entry there, as intelligent as a supercomputer. Not that it is a supercomputer. And in fact, we've already established that these Pokemon have some similarities to UFOs, with Matang looking like a flying saucer, and Magnezone, I mean, it, its Pokedex entries literally talk about how it gets mistaken for a UFO all the time. In fact, further investigation shows that some of the Pokedex entries suggest that people still believe that these Pokemon came from space. And with Beldum, that may make sense as well, because the only places that you can find Beldum or Matang in the wild are in the Great 
Chasm, which is in Unova. That's where, in Black and White 2, you find Curum, a dragon that supposedly fell as a meteorite from space. Clefairy and Clefable, who also came from space, as well as Solrock and Lunatone, two Pokemon that are literally mineral Pokemon that fall from space in the current day. And with Beldum, we can observe the exact same thing happening in Alola, where you find it on Mount Hakulani, which is where you find Minior and Clefa. Again, Minior, a mineral Pokemon that comes from space. So we can see these Pokemon are in those same environments, likely because they have also fallen from space. Magnemite, not so much. Usually you find Magnemite in power plants and that kind of thing, but that's just because it's drawn to the electromagnetism of those areas. Perhaps it's why Magnemite was drawn to Earth in the first place. However, if you still don't believe me, I have two bits of evidence that suggest that Magnemite, there is no way it is man-made. Despite the technological advances of the Pokemon world, Magnemite and Magneton appeared in the AZ War 3,000 years ago, which means there's no way they were man-made, because 3,000 years ago, people weren't artificially making Pokemon. The furthest back we know about out with man-made Pokemon is Magina, and that was 500 years ago, and that Pokemon is made of gears. They do also appear on some official Pokemon merch um, in the Ruins of Alf, which is this binder that depicts uh, Magneton a as a ancient carving, but I don't know if you want to treat that as a canon. So mostly the AZ thing. So screws and bolts and electricity, Magnemite, I'm thinking maybe not so much. What's more than likely is over 3,000 years ago, a Pokemon that was not quite Magnemite and not quite Baldon fell from the stars. Thousands and thousands of years ago, just in the same way that Lunatone and Solrock fall onto Earth today. And then over time, those Pokemon evolved in their own separate directions, and one line became the Magnemite line, and one line became the Beldum line, explaining their origins and how they're both related. These Pokemon are absolutely organic life forms, not war robots. And speaking of which, again, thank you to today's sponsor. These Pokemon are instead from space. As for artificial Pokemon, well, that will be the next video on the channel, the evolutionary tree of life and all the artificial Pokemon that there are. So hi, Pokemon Masters. Next month, I'm looking to move to three uploads every single week, and that is because of you who support me on Patreon. Links to Patreon are in the description, but I have to give a shout out to everyone, but especially the big heroes of this month. Nerd for you, Umbreon Libris and Murray M. Moss. Thank you so much, you heroes.